Back to Hakim Ziyech, who I, I think uh, the, it, the thing I tweeted in our in our text group is our text in our text group, not tweeted in our text group, would be I think he has the look of a stone cold killer. I think that if not today, very soon he is going to raise the expectations of our attackers in a very big way. He does not look like he's messing around. He does not look like he's quite up to speed at all times, but I think there is a real kind of him and Werner have the same kind of like all business. Don't mess with me. I'm, I'm trying to do a thing here. Get out of my way. Like that is, and, and for a team that at la, you know, last year at times was a little happy go lucky was a little chummy. It's going to be weird for Chelsea fans to see that, but I think he is, Dan, going to raise the expectations and the performances of the players around him, and that is only going to be crucial and good and tasty for us as we move forward. Well, if we think about where Chelsea have struggled in phases this season, it's been our ability to change direction or move quickly to shift the other players around. And I think for the first part of this match, when you had... (laughs) you know, a midfield pivot of Jorginho and Kovacic in there. We really struggled to do anything that you could even remotely describe as fast. It was very methodical. What Ziyech brings into the game is an ability to quickly switch play. Some of the passes he was able to knock across to Chilwell or knock into the range of, of Callum or to put you know in a position um, you know, for other players to, to get after, not always getting it to the player, but putting it in the area, that's going to be a pretty... When it gets converted multiple times this season, because it will, the cross that he's able to put into the box, that is a sexy delivery. And that is something, Brandon, that I think we're excited to see more of. (laughs) And I think as he continues to get into full game mode, get into actually starting more matches again, this was his first Chelsea start. Just remember, gets injured in a preseason friendly, the only preseason friendly we had, gets knocked on the knee, <laughs> misses so many matches. This is our first, uh, you know, six Premier League starts, misses our first start in the Champions League, makes a couple substitutes appearance. This is the first. It is October. It is October 28th, and it is the first time he has started a match for us, yet he was the first player we signed heading into this last window. Dan, injuries aren't funny, all right? It's not a laughing matter. They're not. They're no laughing matter. <laughs> um, dude, talk about sauce. Hakim Ziyech's left foot is it's gold. It's pure gold. Um, the audacity that he has to chip in uh, little lofted passes with pace and velocity on them, and they can literally drop over a defender's head and onto Kai Albert's forehead is unbelievable, all right? But... He's a luxury player. He is so bad at tracking back and putting in a tackle. It's like comical. But he's so good going the other way that we just are going to have to adapt and we're going to have to deal with it. Um, and, and it was just, he was even like upset with himself at his inability to tackle a couple times tonight. So I just want to say like Reese James Aspie, they're going to have to be ready, but before they would almost have to overlap to offer something you don't with Hockham. He offers so much on that side that you really don't have to give him too much support. That's, and we'll, we'll talk about why the four, three, three is so important, but when you have the third midfielder in there, he doesn't have to track back as much. It lets him do what he can do. And what he can do is exactly what Dan described. You could have stood there on the other side, the opposite side of the field from Hakim Ziyech, put your arms in a hoop, and he would have scored every time. Like, he, yeah. it is it is incredible to see just how accurate some of these long, driven, fast passes are. These are not lobbed up in the air waiting for a defender to get under him and head him away. These are bullets. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think it's ridiculously impressive. The other thing I was going to mention about him that you know, Dan kind of triggered me on was the, you know, when play gets congested on one side or the other, and if it gets congested on Ziyech's side with Reese James or Aspie or whoever, and the other side is wide open, you got to chill well just screaming down. That is going to open up so much room behind uh, behind uh, opposition lines 
that we're going to be able to do those easy cutbacks all day. Mm -hmm. And and I think you've started to see a little bit of rumination there because we haven't had someone who's able to deliver that accurate of a ball to open up just that tiny amount of space. And when that starts to go, I mean, good Lord, that's well, tasty. The, the problem is, is that we have had players that do that, but it's been our fullbacks. And the issue then is if you're counting the fullbacks to do that, typically the majority, like you, most most often, the fullback is not going to be up there without additional players in the area or the defense compacting themselves into that section of the pitch. With Ziyech being further forward and potentially getting the ball off of a, a turnover or kind of a quick pass played into him, there's more likelihood that someone on the other side might get the benefit of a one-on-one, -on -one, two-on-one scenario that they can really capitalize and take advantage of. There were one or two times where Chill was so, was so far forward, Havertz was, you know, we talked about the header, was up in the box and could have potentially converted on that. I think, you know, he had, you know he, he got tall, which I think is the thing that you forget and you just look at him sometimes and say how tall Kai Havertz is. That is the type of thing that we're going to get to see more and more often, Brandon, is just you know really someone who's able to help deliver passes with a high level of accuracy and to play others into a position to convert. Again, fantastic left foot. It, so the stats from Squawka uh, are 87% pass accuracy, 57 touches, 11 total duels, which that's kind of a weird stat that he was just involved in. <laughs> didn't didn't give his, his recovery rate. Uh, seven recoveries, five shots, four shots on target. Fantastic. Uh, two tackles, one chance created, and one goal. Uh, and again, Opta Joe following this up with 13. Akim Ziyech has been directly involved in 13 goals in his last 15 starts in the Champions League, scoring six goals and assisting a further seven. King. I definitely think that he's going to be much more effective in these European competitions than maybe against a, a Burnley, for example. I don't know, man. I, I think he'll be effective in most matches. Not all, but most. The The goal, I, I find it hilarious that we didn't talk about the goal first, but I think we're all just so amazed by the range of passing that that's, you know, it's like the first thing that comes to your, your mind. His goal was eerily reminiscent of Pulisic's first goal last year eerily reminiscent like he i think he did more to make his goal than pulisic might have just by doing a step over and going past and driving it with the left foot but there were that was a tight space for him to get through a little dribble here a little you know wrap around there and and he put a bullet into the side net and i think you could tell how much that meant to him dan i you know get the monk off his back a little bit to I don't know. I think just kind of cap off a really good performance with a deserved goal. It's exactly what you want to see. And you know, I think that, you know, uh, Lampard had some comments after the match saying that he'll get better. We brought him in to do a job. People may have forgotten about him since he was signed in January, but he is here. And that's uh, and he did win the ball back, as Brandon highlighted seven times, but it was more than any other player on the pitch, too. So we, we did talk about not maybe wanting to make a tackle, but... Yeah, there was one or two times where he tried to play one two off the defenders and uh, tried to. <laughs> he's always trying to get the ball back, which I think is something where he's he's trying to be around it, he's trying to be involved, and that's exactly what you want for someone that's really trying to. Again, he's the the magician, right? He's trying to make something happen out of nothing, and he was able to pull a rabbit out of the hat today. Brandon uh, Lampard then added, "He's here and he's perfect," which I I thought was a little weird, but. <laughs> 